It was very strange to come back to a world that I had not known before and that no one really knew. I would say the first month was a whirlwind. I was a bit of shock, so it, it took me a long time to readjust. A year ago, Emily, Katie, and Kiana were three of 7,000 Peace Corps volunteers evacuated from 60 countries due to the pandemic. I keep getting, we miss you, your house is still here, when are you coming back? We don't know the future of Peace Corps and when new volunteers will set foot on the ground. This month, the organization celebrating 60 years of service without any volunteers abroad. So when that evacuation happened, I was very worried about the organizations as a whole. Maybe there'll be no more Peace Corps ever again. But the Peace Corps is working to plan a path forward. Every single country that was evacuated wants us back. We've all suffered because of the global pandemic. And there is a major need throughout the world to be able to respond. This is a problem that we all need to solve together. The next steps though, won't come without roadblocks as volunteers reflect on their role abroad and how America is represented on the international stage. In this rise of like nationalism and US first and all this crazy stuff, COVID is number one example of how a nation, everything's connected. I mean, what is happening on the other side of the world affects what is happening in the U.S. I know during that time when I went there, a lot of the school shootings was all over the news in America. And so I guess when the Peace Corps opens up and Americans come back, I feel like there will be a new set of curiosity about the American life and the American dream. I'm not sure how much of a dent Peace Corps makes in like advancing the economic or education or health well-being of the country that we're in. The biggest benefit of Peace Corps is that sort of, quote, like, soft diplomatic power that we bring of being ambassadors for our country, but also a cultural exchange. The acting director of the Peace Corps acknowledging the challenges volunteers will face and her argument to maintain the organization. I think we need to re-enter with a great deal of humility and a great deal of partnership. And that is so fundamental to what Peace Corps does. While the timeline to re-enter service countries is still unknown, it's the questions of how and who that volunteers are concerned with. When I started as a Peace Corps volunteer, one of the things that my uncle told me was that, why would you join Peace Corps volunteers? That is something for rich white people. That's not something for, you know, lower income families, especially people of color. And this is a great opportunity for Peace Corps to rebrand themselves. Peace Corps notes its minority participation has grown to 34 percent, but that they're absolutely not done with the growth as volunteers call for equity across economic, religious and educational backgrounds. They're also adding new reimbursement plans for mandatory medical clearances. Some returned volunteers going a step further with their grievances, calling for the abolition of the organization through the group Decolonizing Peace Corps. The conclusion that I've come to is that Peace Corps will acknowledge the privileges that volunteers have, but does absolutely nothing about the root problems that cause volunteers to have the privilege in the first place. A lot of people who counter decolonizing Peace Corps, they're like, look at these reforms. They're talking about recruiting from HBCUs and, you know, increasing the pop pipeline. And we are, you know, three black women sitting here saying, no, that's, that's, that's more about how it benefits we the Americans. And that's the issue. The Peace Corps responding to the group's claims. What I'm very proud of with Peace Corps is we only go into countries where we're invited. And we work very closely with the ministries in those countries to identify where they need support. And it is important that we continue that work, particularly as we see the divisiveness around the world. We need to engage with people who are different from ourselves in, in fundamental ways. For the volunteers that do want to see a future of the Peace Corps, there are some changes that haven't been addressed yet. Medical care within Peace Corps um, around mental health, I think, really needs to be readdressed. But also sexual orientation and kind of providing additional supports for those volunteers. But reforms aside, I think it's definitely worth fighting for. I do think Peace Corps is very valuable because it creates that connection, that very intimate, long-term connection between Americans and other cultures, other foreign countries. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.